Hero bringing you another round of Minecraft. Here we are, about to play some Minecraft. Here we go, we're gonna play some ER. Yep. Let's see if I can get some shameless advertising going for a little bit. Yeah, I'm just gonna do this. Okay. Hmm. Proto Mario said that you cannot beat Pokemon uh, X and Y without catching a single Pokemon. Yeah, you could in the old days, and by that I mean, you know. Um. Yeah. Uh, I keep forgetting my brother gave me. Uh. Un Megalovania in the style of things. Oh, hey, I got a person. Alright, okay, let's get some playing done. Alright, so, my last adventure, I am currently trying to build, well, just a big-ass thing. I don't know what I technically wanted to build. I was just doing stuff. Oh, but now I gotta go do stuff. Perfect. Joy. Let's get some stuff done. Alright, so I guess I gotta chop down some trees. Let's get some trees chopped. Let's see. Nope. Oh, wait. I might actually need this one. And let's see. Um, mine, 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 mine. Oh. Turns out I didn't need a lot of cobblestone. Damn. Okay. So I need to put this away, though. I got a lot of hay. Put this over here. What am I building? I don't know. <laughs> Probably up to no good. I don't know why I have a le random lever. Do got the fishing rod. Put the string away. We'll put this away. Okay, so we're just gonna go ahead and start chopping down some trees. Yay! Deforestation never sounded so much cooler. Wait a minute. <gasps> Maybe if I'm lucky. <gasps> Swampland. Which means there could be clay around. And if there's clay. <gasps> brick houses. I could probably build a big brick wall. I don't have to rely on a lot of things either to do it. La la la. sand. Yeah, clay mostly exists in shallow areas like this. Look at all that clay. Just definitely have to dig it all up now. Can I dig it all up? I have shovels. I don't dig up this oak tree while I'm at it. We've come a long way. Since, since I first started and a long way as in pretty much nowhere I've just been fiddling around on this thing seriously it's probably what I do I probably what I stream when I'm bored not to say you guys are boring or anything like that Meh. let's see Grabbing all the clay.
pulls me closer, Ed. It's getting dark. Yep, I'm gonna have to get running. Bada 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 bada. Ham taro, little hamster's big adventures, my best friend. Here we go. Kill the chicken! Ah! <laughs> El Pollo. I went El Pollo Loco on their ass. Okay. Let's see. We've collected that much clay. Super. Leave that. I will now eat. Let me do some more self promotions real quick. Yeah, I haven't been active lately. Just just because I've been kind of bored of games lately. Not specifically anything. Um, not specifically anything. Oh, that's awkward. Oh yeah, because I left the bed. Huh. Yeah, there's nothing specifically I'm bored with. It's just... I, all the stuff I want to stream is on my Switch and not on my PlayStation. And I don't have all the capturing equipment. Unfortunately. On top of that, I don't even know if I'm allowed... Well, I know I'm not, a, I'm not supposed to stream on the Switch. But what I mean is I don't know if, like, I can do it without getting caught or some kind. I don't know. Uh, Nintendo's weird. I don't know if I'd ever stream Zelda, but... Yeah. Again, did not mean to do that. I'm used to playing on the Switch, so everything. I'm gonna make a. I'm gonna make a thing called. Fur, I'm gonna make a furnace land. I'm gonna call it furnace land. Why? Because I don't know. <laughs> Boom! Bunch of furnaces. I probably gotta go to my special place. Grab coal there. Yeah. Yeah, on the Switch, some of the controllers are, are swapped. So it, it throws me off a little bit. Hamtaro, little hamster, big adventure, my best friend. It's kind of funny. Like, my brothers and I, we both watched Hamtaro. And the young one was too, and the youngest one was too small to, he knows what Hamtaro is, but I don't think he actually has watched it. And if he does remember watching Hamtaro, that must have probably been, uh, sh uh, pre, not, not, I won't say surreal, but it must have been like a, whoa. We watched this as a kid. It was a fun slice of life anime that featured adventures of a hamster. And I say it's a pretty it's a pretty fun show to watch. But it also was made for kids, obviously. But it used to air on Toonami, so they always did like fun little Hamtaro clips instead of uh Oh there we are. Yeah, they used to do a lot of fun Hamtaro clips instead of uh, the theme song. But if you caught it like on a different channel state or a, at a different time that wasn't Toonami for Hamtaro, you actually got to watch the theme song that they had for it. Which to me wasn't a lot of... Uh, it, it wasn't catchy. It was pretty awful. As the reputation goes for those kinds of dubs. But... the But the ending theme was actually pretty bumping. Honestly. 
Like, it was super catchy. At least for a kid's show, you know? But that's the thing I miss is a lot. I miss how free dubs used to be. And by that I mean, like, oh, we're going to make a show about hamsters. Little hamsters. Or, no, no. Like, they, 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 had, they had a lot of free reign. Like, especially when it came to the theme songs. Like, they didn't have to play, like, the songs that they do now. An example would be, like, uh, Net Netflix re released the original Saint Seiya. I don't know if it's the original dub or they had their team dub the original Saint Seiya. Not that uh, 3D show they have for it. But, like... When I think about the original Saint Seiya, they had the uh, Bowling for Soup cover of, um, I can't remember the name of the song, my brother could tell us. But it was like, it, 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 but either way, the, my point is, like, you don't get that kind of uh, content anymore in, in your dubs. Like all the free reign, like sure. In some in some cases, they'll actually go, "Hey, this would sound great in English, so why don't we make the song in English?" Like some people, some some companies will let you do that. Like uh, I know when Funimation took over dubbing One Piece, that's immediately what they did with the first song. They did the they redid the opening. Well, they did the opening. And then it go into an English version of the song. But I remember, but I grew up with the one piece that had the pirate shanty rap. The yayo, 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 whoa oh. His name is Luffy. That's Monkey King Luffy. He's gonna be king of the pirates. He's made of rubber. How did that happen? Yo ho ho, he took a bite of gum gum. Yayo, yayo, yayo. His name's Zolo, he's like a samurai, L-A-D-Y, Nami's not shy, Usopp's doing his moxing thing, and Sanji's cooking and chop his doctor in, yayo, yayo, yayo. Yeah, th that's what I grew up with, and just so that people know, I was like a kid when they started doing these dubs, I was probably like 10 maybe, but even then I enjoyed, I like... I'm a pretty immature person, so I'll, I'll, I'll enjoy a lot of childish things. Like, like there are cartoons nowadays that make me cringe. Like, the, I think Teen Titans Go is unanimous on the cringe mark. So I never watched it. Like, I just seen clips of it. And Thundercats Roar. I don't know, I haven't seen that personally, but I, I, I've heard the cringe culture behind it. It's like, uh, they're bringing cringe culture to kids, and I'm like, uh... Yeah, they're doing kids' cringe culture with that. Huh. Danger zone! Man, I like how common this clay is. I never actively in Minecraft search for clay. At least not for, uh, I'm gonna make a brick house kind of purpose. I never bothered with like intricate houses. An example was a dirt house for me was just as fine as making a wooden house or a cobblestone house. I, uh, yeah. I don't try to get too complicated with the builds because I can use the materials for something else. I've used the cobblestone, like whenever I whenever I make a mine. I don't know if anybody has done ever done a mine shaft in this game or their own quarry. But whenever I do my own quarry, I uh I use the leftover cobblestone materials and I'll turn them into uh stone. And I'll make them into like stone bricks. I built houses with them. 
I've done cobblestone fences, but it usually depends on how I wanted to do certain things. Like, what am I in the mood for in this Minecraft game is how I kind of treat everything. Actually, I think I might just cut down a bunch of trees not to make what I need to make. Or I might just see you get a bunch of coal going. Like, I, I have this thing in Minecraft that I never go exploring a cave until I feel like I'm ready. Or I want to get, or I need iron materials or gold materials. I never try to act proactively search for, uh... Um... Yeah, I never try to proactively search for, uh... Um, diamond in the game. Like, I know people try to search for diamond, but, like, all I need is the, like, four diamonds. So I can make my diamond pickaxe, get so I can collect the obsidian, and it's just because I want to, it's just because I want to get the, uh, what do you call it, the, uh, ah, oh, man. So I can make the enchantment table. Yeah, that's what I do. But even then, like, I don't active, like, I don't actively need it, per se. Like, it, it's not my in-game goal, is I need to get that enchantment table, because I just go fish, and I'll do it for hours, too, until I get the enchantments I want. And a lot of times I get, I, I get really lucky and end up getting the enchanting, uh, um, yeah, I end up getting the enchanting table, uh, the enchanted, uh, stuff first. Uh, it's about to be nightfall. I'm gonna make a bunch of, yeah, furnaces. Yeah, I, I, I find it more challenging to try to survive uh, on the surface than trying to get as much equipment as I can to go mining and get all the iron stuff and um, amongst other things. I once got lost and tried to f look for my house when I had a bunch of stuff like this before. And uh, I was like, oh no, I can't find my house. I'm going to die. I ended up surviving to the night and making it to my house. And then the sun started rising. I was like, well, go back to work. Oh man, I've done that in real life. I don't know if anyone has ever done that. But the longest shift I had ever worked in my entire uh, 27 years of life had been... 19 I always switch it between 19 and 19 and a half hours the reason why I worked those shifts for so long was just because uh, um, I was I was a caterer and we had a big catering event at the college I worked at and I really mean it was a big catering event so and I'm I'm like the I was like the head caterer there pretty much so I was there for 19 19 and a half hours and, oh man, I was exhausted, and I still had to get up the next morning at 6 a.m. Like, I didn't go home till about 11.30 that night. I sat and talked to my brother, because I was like, I haven't seen you, like, nearly 24 hours, dude. Actually, for me, it probably had been 24 hours, because I had a pretty early start that morning. And, uh, yeah, I had a really early start. And so, it had been a while since I saw my brother. So I went over and I talk, uh, I went over and chatted up with him for a little bit. Yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and just do this. To get more charcoal going. Yeah, and...
Yeah, after chatting it up with my brother, he go, uh, my brother, <laughs> I'm not kidding. My brother got so worried for me, he actually went to my job and he, he was going to try and pull me out of work. I am not kidding. My brother was so worried of that that I never went home. Because usually whenever I go, usually whenever uh, I leave work, the first thing I do is I go home and I change clothes. And then I go do whatever I'm going to do. And I'll go talk to my brother a little bit, chat it up with him. And, oh man, he he knew I never went home that day. The pet, he like, like I, I think it was one of those days where he did go to work. He expected me to seat me back and he didn't. And and he was ready to pull me out of work, only for me to l pull be pulling out of the parking lot. And as soon as he sees me pull out of the parking lot, heading home, he goes, "Dude, how long have you been gone?" I told him, "Dude, 19 hours. It was a 19-hour shift, and I still have to get up at 6 a.m." And he's like, "Then get your ass to bed." Yeah, like I was so tired. My boss says, "Okay, this is what I need you to do. Uh, that's what I need you to do." Because I think it was like a very short... Like, for some reason, the next day, it was very short. Um, he's like, I want you... And it was like a crazy part, too. It was, like, it was only going to last two days. We usually go for three. But in this case, this was a very short meeting. So after, like, I had gotten off of work, he, uh, I, was, I was, like, scheduled to, like, the middle of the afternoon. But... You can see me being all tired. I'm like downing coffee because I used to get free coffee from Starbucks. Yeah, we had a Starbucks at our college, and they gave me free coffee all the time. I met, I was I was pretty tight with the Starbucks girl. Actually, all the Starbucks girls I I had we were pretty tight with. I was pretty I was pretty tight with. And then they, they looked at me and said, "Okay, here's what I need you to do. I want you to go. I want you to go downstairs." clock out and then go home and take a nap but my brother was uh starting college so i instead of doing what he told me to do or i i totally disobeyed him and instead i went to my brother's new dorm where he was moving in and i hung out with him and my mom yeah and i told him i probably won't see you today if i do it'll probably be at dinner time i don't know how long you are planning to stay but no he he only made me work like five hours of that shift yeah like like the, my whole shift was supposed to last until like the middle of the afternoon but I was also the day, the day before I was only supposed to work 12 hours of my 19 hour shift yeah like and the thing is that that's some of the th details like like, if you ever work at a job interview and people say, what's the longest you've ever worked? That That's something that's never comes up. And I looked at him and, like, they mostly, they mostly mean in years and not by what's the longest shift you've ever worked. Because, like, I, I pulled, like, 19 hours and, oh my gosh, I was so hangry. And I, it was, uh, it was also the year I was tr I was also the year I was trying to move in with my girlfriend too. So I got to uh, after that after that shit. I, I kept telling my girlfriend all summer, "Your job is to find a job by the end of the to find a job in a place we can move into before August, so I don't have to go endure this." It ended up not working like that. I was trying to skip out on it. It, it happens every other year. So, like, there was a year where I thought we were going to work 40 hours. Like, we worked so... Yeah, it used to be three days. Probably in three days, I was able to work 40 hours. And any other day, it would have been overtime. And that was just, like, before they had me, like, uh, doing all the... Uh, and that was back before they had, like, plans for me. You know, like, oh, we're going to use you for this. He, he, he. No, like after that, that was like when my boss solidified. No, no, we 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 need you for this job now. Like, you're our guy. And I was like, okay, as long as there's more pay involved. Yeah, but the problem, uh, but the point I'm getting at was the only reason why we didn't make overtime in a week 
they I think a couple weeks prior they had just changed uh, the pay period and by that I mean um, instead of going hey this guy uh, worked or no I'm sorry I'm getting a little tongue tied hey your pay your use of your pay period starting on a Wednesday ending on a Tuesday we change it to Thursday ending on a Wednesday starting Thursday ending Wednesday Events started on a Wednesday, so the first, like, 12 hours, like, the first few, like, 12 hours we had accumulated, uh, roll, what well, was on one paycheck, and then we had to, and the other hours rolled to the starting of another week. So we ended up being, like, 10 hours short, or something like that, or, like, 12 hours short. So, instead, we... Ah, that was, okay. That's disappointing. So I ended up not getting those hours that I wanted. I still keep in contact with my old buddies at work. Yeah, even my boss. Uh, I, from time to time. They can't always answer me, but when they do, it's like, hey. They just start... Everyone's, like, starting college now, so... And by that, I mean, like... They're college cafeteria, so it's obvious that they're going to be like, hey, we're doing stuff today. The reason why I... Uh, so, I guess going back to Minecraft a little bit. The reason why I start doing... Uh, getting as much materials on the surface as I can is because one day... I guess it clicked in my head. It was... Uh, gather as many tools as you can. Wood go into a mine and start digging for coal and iron because that's how I was kind of taught how to play Minecraft was to gather as much coal and iron as possible so that way you could uh yeah it, it, it was like that way you could you can basically start cooking and all this kind of junk yeah I had a man, my brother used to know everything about Minecraft because like whenever he was a teenager in high school it's all he played with his friends and yeah his level of knowledge was pretty high at the time so whenever he started playing whenever he did all the mic so he did a bunch of minecraft shenanigans um so he always told me to do all that was possible and then one day uh i saw this thing for charcoal because it, it always said charcoal torches and coal torches and i was like charcoal so i started thinking about it and I started experimenting with, because uh, as soon as I get that cobblestone stove, I usually use wood until I don't no longer need it. So one day I decided, why don't I cook the wood, since that's how you make charcoal in real life. You just, uh, so anyways, yeah. So you, yeah, so I went ahead and just started doing all that mess. And next thing I know, I'm like, oh my gosh, I, how much, like, it, it, it kind of boggled my mind a little bit that you could make charcoal, when I, I found out how to make charcoal in the game, and I started thinking to myself, before I go explore underground, what could I gather first? So, I had made a bunch of charcoal, which was, a, it didn't last as long as coal, but dang, it was still pretty, it, it was still pretty good. And then that's whenever, like, I did a bunch of different things. Like, I had a bunch of friends go, hey, let's make a quarry. And I was like, what the heck is a quarry? I have to look because I don't know. It's not this game. Yeah, I'm kind of playing two different games uh, of Minecraft. On this one, I play for the stream. The other one I play for, uh, I play on my Switch. And I actually found a cavern, I kid you not. Like, I wasn't exploring caves. I'm just trying to get everything my everything situated at the moment. Wow, I did not realize there was a natural cave over there. I gotta go check that out here in a bit. Yeah. I'm just getting as much charcoal for so I can get all my stoves going. Because honestly, charcoal is probably something that's really easy to get. Oh, here we go. Just finished making that. So I'm going to go ahead and stick this in here, get that, get this going.
then let's get this going. Because I want to see how many bricks we can make. Ah, crap. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. Oh, fuck. Oh, fuck. Just go to... Oh, my God. So I can make 29 blocks a brick. Super. I'm not gonna lie, that's probably the worst thing right there. There was illagers. Did they just despawned? Seems like they did. I'm surprised they left me alone, though. I got one, I got a single iron bar. Cool. Cooked a bunch of chicken. Oh, look, okay, that's coal, coal. Yeah, I get it now. Put some charcoal there. I want to put this as important building material. Let's put that there. Let's go ahead and do oak slabs. Yay, all the oak slab. Uh, pressure plate, yeah. Let's make a flint and steel, because it's a fact that we can now. Kind of a slow burn, not gonna lie. Same as that. Same as that. <laughs> Better go make some more. I'm burning coal to make more coal. Which is hilarious, because the original purpose of this entire uh, thing was actually to finish my floor.
Oh yeah. <laughs> oh wow, I went in a circle. It was a shark. It's a shark. Oh, that reminds me of one time my uh, cousin's wedding. He, uh... I think my brothers and I were watched. My brother Kevin got me the uh, Adam Sandler collection, and it came with Billy Madison, uh, Happy Gilmore, and the, and I now pronounce you Chuck and Larry. And oh my gosh, the reason why to me those those are probably some of the funnier movies. Those are some really funny movies. I enjoy them a lot. Um, I have a friend who got offended by the movie just because uh, he was gay and different, and it brought in re bad representation to his to uh, his demographic. So it's understandable why he felt the way he did. So I never like you know questioned him on it or anything. I was like, okay, man, I just won't talk about the movie when I'm in front of you. I I respect your thing. That's cool. But here's the funny part, though. Oh. Uh, the one thing that always gets me is they have Rob Schneider dressed as a uh, as a Chinese man, and it took me forever to realize it was Rob Schneider because I don't read the end credits. I'm not one of those guys. Um, so it took me a while to realize the Chinese guy was uh, Rob Schneider in a uh, Chinese makeup. Again, part of cringe culture at the time. Uh, one of the funniest things that he did was during his speech, he talked about love is like a circle, not a triangle, because a triangle has corners, so it means you could stop. But a circle, it's never ending; it's always on a continuous loop. It's just circle. And so he, he, so it became like a running gag that he always talks about love is a circle. Well, one time, well, one, well, we went to my cousin's wedding though. Um, the priest uh, was not a Chinese man, no. But he, or not the priest, but the minister who did the wedding, he went, he went, love is like a circle. My brothers and I started laughing. My dad's like, shut up, shut up, shut up, shut up, shut up. <laughs> we started going, it's a circle, it's a circle. Oh my gosh, my dad was so upset, <laughs> was getting very upset at us because he was like, shut up, shut up, shut up. That's not what we're here. Shut up. Finally, he go. Finally, the our cousin Paul, he, he's he's kind of quiet, but after you get to know him a little bit, he's kind of crazy. He's one of those quiet people. And my cousin Paul, uh, he sees us doing it, <laughs> and all of a sudden you see uh, him go, "It's a circle," and then my dad just gave up and just started laughing. <laughs> my dad just gave up right there. He he still felt like he needed to be in control of everything because I had been at, I had been at call I had been away from home for at this point about five years. My brothers were my brother Kevin was recently uh, he recently moved out of my parents' house, so and we were living together in a house, and our brother Marcus was still in high school. So you know my dad is still in dad mode. And then whenever we did that, he was just like, I give up. I, I, you could see him just give, physically give up whenever our cousin, who's, I think he's, uh, he's in his four, he might be in his late 30s, early 40s, I can't remember. And he's there with his wife, he goes, it's a circle. Because he sees us fooling around to him, it's a circle. <laughs> oh, I miss Paul. <laughs> Oh my gosh! Uh, what makes what makes Paul even what makes the Paul thing even funnier is that my dad I don't know where like I forget the whole story behind where's Paul because uh, I asked my dad about it one day and he told me the story I totally forgot so next time I gotta ask him about it because as kids he my dad will ask like his, my dad's version of a dad joke. He did, the, he did the classic stuff, like, Hi, Hungry. Hi, Hungry, I'm Dad. <laughs> um, kind of jokes. But in this case, he was, like... He'd walk up to us randomly and ask us questions, like, Where's Paul? And we're like, I don't know. And he goes, Do you miss Paul? 
And then one day, we, we decided to pull that joke on him. And we were, I looked at my dad and said, hey, dad. He goes, what? Where's Paul? Oh, my gosh. That man cringed. He was just like, he didn't want to answer because we just got back from the wedding. And then I looked at him and said, do you miss Paul? He goes, shut up. <laughs> I miss Paul. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah, Paul's cool. He, uh, yeah, I think he was like, when we were kids, we were in college and we were getting into Zelda. Actually, he was, I think he was freshly out of college, but he was still living with his mom. But I can't remember exactly. Like he, I think he came over eventually. He came, he he came down eventually just to visit, and he had all his old games. So like he basically, basically his parents had had a they made a bedroom for him, and it was considered like a kind of like a shrine, I guess. I, I'm not gonna say go as far and say it's a shrine, but they had a basically. Basically, it looks like how he left it as... If he moved away from home, it's it looks as w the way he left it when he w moved away. And then one day we happened to see Paul. We introduce ourselves. We talk a little bit. And then we told him we've been wanting to get into more Legend of Zelda, but we don't have a... Uh, but we, we were young. We don't have like the money or the funds. All we have to remember Zelda from is Legend of Zelda A Link to the Past, which is what we had on the, uh, which I had on the SNES. My, well, what's it called? That my cousins and I would argue about on who really owned that Legend of Zelda game specifically. Yeah. They went back and forth on who owned Zelda. And then we just never had a Zelda game. Like we tried to get our parents to buy us Zelda games and stuff, and they were like, "No, that, 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 that's we're not getting you that." Yeah, we had this thing where our parents didn't like buying video games for us because that's what we obsess about. But they'd also buy us the wrong video games, and it's not all the time. They they just look at a game and they just think it's fun. You know, it, it's a very classic parent move. So again, I don't blame them for thinking, "Oh, okay, they'll like this." Cause there are some games that they use that that they get they got us and it was a lot of fun. Like uh, I guess kind of a good one was uh, Smuggler's Run. I'm not gonna lie, that that was pretty fun. Growing up. Then uh, yeah, let me see. Smuggler's Run was one of them. Uh, oh, my mom just texted me two minutes ago. I'll text her back here in a bit. She most likely wants to talk to me and be like, hey, what are you doing? Come talk to me. Why don't you visit anymore? Where are my grandkids? Mother, you don't get grandkids. I swear. I'm going to be, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start using that as a thing. Keep it up, mom. Keep it up. Oh, shiznit. What was that? next day and I go pick up my crap again that's a beautiful part about dying in front of your house at night I died in front of my house at night <laughs> just, just go pick up your stuff again oh my gosh you are a persistent little bastard Okay, so we got 32 bricks now. Oh yeah, I also don't have any kind of armor. Let's see, how much, how much? No, I don't have a lot of raw high. Rolling, rolling, rolling. Raw high. Move them all, head them up, head them up. Move it all. I'll 
probably carry that here in a bit. Let's grab this. I got raw I never saw a purpose on what the left hand was for. Sadly, no. Oh wait. That's random. I have 64 lumps of what? Yeah, sorry, I got a bunch of coal and I'm trying to figure out where it came from. I guess I burned all my coal trying to make more coal. Ha ha. That happens. That's the thing. This, this coal doesn't last as long as real coal, but that's okay. Charcoal doesn't last as long as coal. But that's fine. I just needed to do its job. Just do your job. But I'm also using them, burning them a lot. So I'm not surprised that it's not going to be able to do everything. I also don't need to smelt anything, so there we go. Boom. Yeah. In the meantime, rawhide! No. <laughs> Yeah, again, didn't take too long. So we'll go ahead and put this here. Whoop, whoop. Whoop, 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 whoop. Charcoal's easy to get. Charcoal's easy. You can regrow charcoal. Fossil fuels, you only have so little of them. But yeah, our cousin Paul, uh, growing up, he he gave us uh, our first Zelda game for the for the game Game Boy Color, and it was uh, he didn't want like he he wasn't playing his GameCube anymore. He had the Game Boy Player, and he was like, "Ah, oh, I'm not giving up my GameCube, no sir." But here, I'll give you my Zelda games. He gave us the Minish Cap plus an instruction booklet that went with it. Then he gave us uh, his uh, it's like, and then he gave us the Minish Cap, and Link to the Past for the Game Boy Color, but we couldn't play the Four Swords Adventures because surprise, surprise, you can't play the Four Swords unless you have four people on it. It was that whole uh, well, we put a lot of money into the game, into the uh, I forget how they called it. Like they invested a lot of money into the. Uh, they basically they invested a lot of money into the link cable system and only Pokemon was using it pretty much. So it was just, well, why don't we do this instead? So let's go ahead and just do this. Cuz I was meaning to to do, to do my floor.
<sighs> I, there's like abundance of livestock here. My other, I'm not used to it. Only because uh, in another game that I had been playing for months, the only livestock I was able to get a hold of were uh, it, it, it was on a small island. I'm not used to a big open area again. So it's weird to see just random chickens and cows in abundance. Get rid of all the dirt first. Yeah, the plan is actually to uh, use a Ooh, coal. I'll grab it here, kit, real quick. In a bit, maybe. I don't know. Yeah, the idea is I'm gonna build cobblestone walls, but I might do something different with them because. I might like stone I might do stone brick fences better. I'm I broke my shovel. Uh, I'm a big baby, I like to try. Yeah, I, I've noticed, uh, I think I've noticed and I've accepted the fact that I'm a very emotional person. So instead of su trying to suppress it, I just let myself uh, um, experience that, um, those emotions. So an example would be, uh, yesterday I was watching a show called Digimon Tamers. And I just finished the show. And there's a lot of tear-jerking moments in that, and I just let myself go. I, I still don't think it's as bad as uh, <laughs> Digimon Adventure 2. Yes, that's exactly what's going on. I could make this really bizarre, Marcus. How, 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 happy to have you aboard. Like, no joke, the other day I, uh, I probably spent $6 on Minecraft coins. And I got the Jurassic World expansion. So I can literally play Jurassic World on here. And it was crazy. I got killed by a T-Rex. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, the, apparently the whole point of the game is to run the park without disasters. But you could also, like, breed your own uh, monsters, too. So, like, I uh, had, um, what do you call it? Um, yeah, like, so, for example, I made uh, raptors. I made a raptor. Like, the first thing you learn in the game is, how, is the collecting fossils and raptors and whatnot. So I did that. Oh snap. Well, how did you no? Bad spider. Bad. Bad. If I could make any scream right now, it would be the uh shark puppet that likes cheese. That's the kind of scream I want to do right now, because I saw that spider. Yeah, 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 and then you have to you have to basically avert uh, di disasters, and they'll and they'll count like the littlest thing as a disaster. An example: a disaster would be, oh, this vehicle broke down, go fix it, and they give you a wrench. 
And then on top of that, they give you, like, the, the game has its own version of every tool in the game. So, like, you can get ice cream and hot dogs. And it's called Disaster Dog, too. Um, in certain parts, like, when you're at the Fossil Dig, you actually have to platform to the next location. And you can't stack blocks. Like, you get a bunch of redstone sand or something like that. And you can't stack it on top of more redstone sand just so that you can make it. A staircase to get to the next area you actually have to platform and uh, cl uh, what's called my girlfriend had to watch me do it just climb 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 and I'm just like this sucks I have to get platforming skills and it's all in first uh, all in first person so it makes me feel like I'm playing like mirror's edge or something I don't know Last time I played Persona, we finally got to do actual combat. Uh, we're doing the first infiltration, like where the game actually gives you the option. Do you want to infiltrate or do you want to go do other stuff beforehand? And we chose to infiltrate, but we haven't picked it up since then. That was probably last week. I want to play it some more, but it might get to the point where I might have to play it without uh, Chloe. And I'll just tell her, go watch the anime. <laughs> uh, I probably won't go that far. But... It, 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 it's something I really do want to play to get through a story. But it's just kind of hard whenever you get to play with somebody that's not as interested as you are. Yeah. I know the anime is hot garbage. I'd watch it ironically, just to tell you guys my first thing, my, the first thing I watched when I played Persona, or what got me into Persona was the anime, and just watch y'all cringe at the fact that I said that. Like, that would be my only purpose into, uh, what's called, into doing that, is just to, just to make y'all cringe. Because imagine, imagine how it would feel like if somebody goes, oh, you're a Persona fan? Yeah. Cool. What's your favorite thing? I really like the anime. What? Yeah, the anime is the reason why I've got the game. Although, I gotta say, the game is uh, kind of uh, slow. Not as fast as the anime, and all of a sudden, just watch y'all all just get triggered. Yeah, I imagine, so, like, that's something that's rare to hear somebody actually say. The dub to the anime is good. That is something that is actually tough to, that, that's, a, that's a tough pill to swallow for a lot of people. Like, dude, I suggest, like, go, imagine going up to somebody going, dude, if you're going to watch this anime, you got to watch the dub. The dub is where it's at. And then everyone's going to be like, what? <laughs> like, everyone just gives you the come again. And uh, I don't blame them either. Like, like that, I would have to say that is probably one of the toughest pills to swallow. And personally, I like uh, dubbed anime. I'm not one of those people that, that constantly hate on it. I hate on it, ironically, because I do like it, but I will continue to watch it. Well, and the only reason why I don't watch subbed anime is just because it's available on Crunchyroll and ads. Also, I have, like, a specific anime season that I go by. Uh... Like, like uh, during the fall and winter, I watch, uh, everything I watch is ba is basically, um, uh, what do you call it, uh, I watch superhero shows first, or in the fall, in the summertime, which actually would be my anime season, that's what I would watch, but it depends on what I'm on the mood for. For example, the hot anime right now is Uzaki-chan Wants to Hang Out. I would... Love to watch Uzaki-chan loves to hang out. Why don't I? Well, not because there's a cringe culture for it, or it's because um, the the anime is uh, kind of getting panned because of its uh, subtext or anything like that. No, no, no. I could care less about all those things. The reason why I don't watch it is just because I just don't feel like watching it right now. I watch anime much later. An example is, uh, let me see... I I want to say the JoJo craze is going down, but I know that's not true. 
and I'll probably end up watching JoJo. Like I'll, I'll probably like you, Marcus. You'll probably be like twenty one at your twenty one birthday party, and you'll be too drunk to hear my text message or to like to read my text message. And you'll probably finally get a text message that goes, "Wow, I just binge watched all of JoJo's Bizarre Adventure. Why didn't I get into this sooner?" Because I, I I ended up watching stuff a lot later. Like example was Goblin Slayer. I, I saw the memes of that before I went and watched the anime. When I saw Goblin Slayer was on, uh, um, when I saw when I saw that uh, Funimation had it, I was like, oh, cool, let's watch it. And as I watched it, I was just like, I could see why people didn't like this anime, just because of its context and themes. But other than that, it's a really good anime. Dang, that's awesome. <laughs> that's how it felt watching it, watching the show, like. Wow, I could see why people didn't like it, but I like it. <laughs> um, like to me, I I thought it was really I thought it was really cool the fact that everyone wants to be an adventure anime person. Yeah, I he, JoJo is actually in that era where it's totally '90s, but it's right in that era where the shonen anime was beginning to change, where uh. There, there was like an anime hype where everybody looked like, uh, like Jotaro, not Jotaro, sorry, uh, Kinshiro, Kinshiro. Everybody looked like Kinshiro from, uh, yeah, yeah, everybody was starting to look like Kinshiro and they're like, oh my gosh, who's this Kinshiro guy? And it was Fist of the North Star. And they started doing a lot of anime like that. Like you could see the same uh, thing for Berserk. By the way, I found like big old novel, like big old tomes of Berserk at a at a at a store at a bookstore here in, uh, over here, and they had like uh, tomes of different of old books of old anime. Like they had the Battle uh, Battle Angel Alita, uh, and a bunch of other stuff. Uh, I almost bought the Alita uh, the Battle Angel Alita manga. As a big old tome because it's only thirty bucks, and it's like the deluxe edition of the of the anime of the uh, of the manga. But yeah, like Berserk uh, is one of those anime where people went, "Oh my gosh, that's this is really good. Why isn't there more of this?" Then, um, yeah, that was, like, the animation style. Like, animation style has changed over the years where everybody is make like, um, everybody's using, uh, they're trying to make their girls more kawaii, a little busty, but, yeah. Like, Uzaki-chan, I'll probably watch it some other time. That'll be a point where I feel like, okay, I guess I'll download Crunchyroll and I guess I'll watch it. I'll go through the ads. But... Because, like, I used to go, I'll oh, wait for the dub to come out just because I had the uh, Funimation account or I had the Verve account, and I'll probably watch it on Verve. But since I don't, I'm not subscribed to, to those guys anymore, I usually wait for it to come out on Hulu, but Hulu takes forever to get anime, and it's not always guaranteed because they got some Funimation, some, uh, what's called, some High Dive, some Viz Media. A lot of it is Viz Media. Like, they have, like, everything of Naruto um, in, on there. I think even, like, Rock Lee's uh, Adventures or whatever it's called. Yeah. Or, like, Netflix might get it. That's another problem. I think somebody had pointed out the reason why uh, piracy is so bad in anime is just because how many people have spread it out. Like, how many people in the Western Hemisphere... Has spread it out to multiple platforms. Like, uh, if you want to watch Seven Deadly Sins, you can. I think I don't know if you could watch it on Crunchyroll, or people just use the VPN and just use Netflix. Or no, actually no. Uh, I no, they just went and pirated the show where somebody went and did their own uh, um, subtitles for it. Yeah, so like, there's a bunch of people who already watched uh, Seven Deadly Sins uh, season three, and season three just came out on Netflix. And I support the official release as much as possible, but there's just some anime that take too long to make and or too long to uh, get transferred over here that people just yeah 
yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's the thing. Uh, my uh, Kevin had pointed this out too. Kiss anime is the hydra of piracy. Cut off one head, two more shall take its place. But he, he did a typo and accidentally said three. And he was about to correct himself. And I said, dude, don't correct you. I was going to correct you. And I felt fit not to correct you because you are not wrong. There are so many versions of Kiss anime out there. But every time Kiss anime dies, I just see the hot single milfs in my area disappear. Yeah, I saw a meme of that, and I thought that was actually pretty funny. I was like, haha, humor. Yeah, it's getting to the point where, like, if you actually look at how much Japan... Like, I always tell people, uh, I don't condone piracy, but there are just some things that you have to... That you can't fully enjoy and watch because it's not made available so like an example or or a game even going as far as games like i have a friend that's a my friend angel he goes yeah dude uh you shouldn't pirate it's it's illegal it's wrong it hurts the company i said no the company hurt itself and they said how did the company hurt itself by taking this game or this game it mostly was games by taking this game out of circulation they uh and yeah by taking the game out of circulation they obviously don't care about it. An example is Resident Evil 4. Capcom has made this game available on so many different consoles. And they do it for all their Resident Evil main story games. I found there's like over 40 different versions, I want to say, of Resident Evil 2. Maybe less. I, I might be exaggerating. But you can get that game on PC. N64 played it. I mean, like, they had to do a lot of tricks to it, but they got N64 to play it. If it was on GameCube and they added extra stuff, they had a handheld black and white version of it with only Leon's uh, campaign in it. But guess what? They figured out how to do it. Yeah, and the, and the biggest offender I told him was if Capcom really wanted me to, to legitimately buy and play the game... They would have localized it and made it more available for other things. Example was a, a game, and Capcom's really one of those big games that goes, oh, let's just make it more available for everybody. Example is a uh, Haunting Ground is available only on the PlayStation uh, Japanese PlayStation Store, and so as an so as a Westerner, you can't buy it without having to spend three hundred dollars just for a physical copy of the game. It's why I told my brother, dude, just pirate it. If you're gonna, if you find it and you own it and you buy it, okay, good, awesome. But other than that, like, literally, just don't. Like, I, I literally told him it's not worth it. <laughs> like, it, it's worth to buy, but it's not worth to spend three hundred and fifty dollars just so you could own uh, somebody's used copy of the game. It's kind, of, it's why I, why I, it's why like they need to make more games available on the eShop. Um, like, for example, Turok. It's probably the first N64 game that actually got ported to the Switch. And everybody absolutely ate it up. And it's only the first Turok. Could you imagine if Capcom... or And that's not Capcom, but could you imagine like how much money Capcom could make if they did the same thing with Dino Crisis? Or uh, Haunting Ground's one of them? Because there are some games that came out... Yeah, a lot of it is just because they don't make certain things uh, available. But as far, but I feel bad when it's anime companies because when you do the research, they're the ones that actually get affected by piracy. Hollywood don't get affected by piracy. It's just what was it? Avengers Endgame? Yeah, it, it's easy. It, it's easily accessible, and only one streaming service has it: Disney Plus. But you don't have to get the streaming service because it exists on Blu-ray and DVD. Mulan is probably going to be one of those movies that gets uh, pirated just because people don't want to spend $30 plus the $7 or however much it is for Disney Plus just so you can watch Mulan. Like, I only got Disney Plus for as long as I did just so I could watch The Mandalorian. And after I was done with The Mandalorian, I was just like, oh, okay, I guess I don't need this anymore. I pulled it, Andy went, I don't want to play with you anymore.
and I don't entire like and like yeah I would say in anime condition in anime sense it is their it is Japan's fault that they don't put these anime in circulation because there are just some like there are people who watch anime for a living and like YouTubers review anime all the time as a as a source of income on YouTube and they you they they'll use newer anime because it's easier and more accessible through Crunchyroll and Verve but then you have a uh, uh, what was it? Uh, anime like uh, yeah. Then you have anime like they want to review old anime like Kanigumon, or like uh, or some other obscure older anime. Yeah, it's gonna be hard to get to some of those anime just because they don't. They're not in circulation anymore. They don't exist. A great example was is, is basically any of the Kanigumon series. Like, you can't find, uh, like, you can find manga of it. It's not that hard to find manga. And you can find it translated. But you can't, like, watch sub versions of, uh, Kanikuman. The only thing that actually, uh, I think Kanikuman, you can find it in Spanish. As far as dubs go. And then, uh, and then it's, and actually the theme song's cool because it goes, Go! Go! Musculo! And then they start singing in Spanish. Instead of the, Go! Go! Muscle! Yeah, it was pretty odd. It, yeah. And Kanikuman's a really good anime, too. They ha they made, and it has, like, it has two, it has three series, and the first series actually spans, like, uh, uh, se it, it spans, like, several hundred episodes. And so it does become it because they stop putting certain things in circulation. But I imagine this older anime is easier to get into if you plot, play it in Japan. But it won't be subtitled for English. And even if it was, you have to basically play a guessing game with it. So there's that. Um, do I condone piracy? No. But if it's your only choice of watching certain content, then yeah. Like, you'll, like uh, my friend pirates, he doesn't mind. And I'll just and if he comes over and he pirates a uh, example would be Ninja Turtles, yeah. If he pirated Ninja Turtles, uh, like we watched Batman versus uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, and I was getting I was gonna drop money and buy the um, and buy it, but he goes, hey man, check it out. It came out. Let's watch it. I was like, oh okay. I didn't mind watching it. I, and now I think about it, that was actually over a year ago, because we were living at the. Uh, we were, we were living at the old house on Lockhart. And so, uh... But yeah, uh, I, it does whenever it comes to certain things. Like I told uh, a friend of mine who was watching an anime called Sorceress Orphan Stabbers. Sorceress Stabber Orphan or something like that. Um, it was an anime, but I told him it was actually a video game first. And I, it was no longer in circulation because it hadn't come out in PS2 and I couldn't find a copy of it on Amazon. At least I wasn't uh, looking hard enough. And because it wasn't available, I was just like, well, looks like we got to pirate it. And he hates that I resort to piracy, but I looked at him and said, dude, I'm sorry, but I don't see it. Like, like I said, the only legit way you can watch this, and it's not even... And it's funny because like the companies never like this because it's not even legit. Is watching it on YouTube, like, it, like like let's plays and stuff. They hate let's plays because it just makes people people would rather watch let's plays instead of playing the game for themselves. Like I knew I I knew some people who say I never buy a video game unless I know what I'm getting into. In which that case I'm like what. <laughs> Why don't you just play the game for yourself and make your own decisions? And he goes, nah, it's easier if I just want, let other people play it before I decide I want to buy it. And I mean, I looked at him like, I don't know about that, but okay. I'd rather experience the game for myself. It's why I don't watch Let's Plays. Because I know someone's going to go out there and be like, if you watch Let's Plays of this, we'll do this, or, you know... Everyone has their own uh, has their own opinions on Let's Plays. Personally, I like Let's Plays if I'm trying to check out a game that I'm very unsure about. 
an example was a uh, or or if it's just a game I don't have the console on and I want to know and I'm actually curious enough to know what goes on in it. Example was uh, I did I only watched the cutscene as a uh, for for the Deadpool game. And the uh, person and the YouTuber marked it as a uh, Deadpool the game the movie, and I was just like, okay, I'll watch this. But if you actually ask, if you if you ask other co gaming companies, they'll tell you it's free advertisement, and Scott Cawthon is like the face of that market. But if you uh, if you listen to Nintendo though, Nintendo will straight up tell you piracy. <laughs> and it's not like Nintendo makes crap games. They just tell people piracy. <laughs> like, you are doing this and it hurts us. And like, who are we hurting? People are in it. There, there is no, there is no uh, victim in this transaction. Like if you want me to pirate your games, I'll gladly do it. I will port like it, like basically you have that one hacker. I will port Breath of the Wild onto my PlayStation and do a Let's Play of it, and I will put it on PS4 Share. I'll do it. Like that like I feel like there will be an, there's an unhinged person out there that says, "This bro gets it. He gets it." Get and he leaves me a message. You get it. Here. Take a copy of my Breath of the Wild. I'll email it to you. I, I feel like that's how I'll get a PS4 copy of Breath of the Wild. Someone going, I, I, I have made a port to spite Nintendo, and you, sir, get it. Here you go. Your copy of Breath of the Wild for the PlayStation. I was like, okay. okay. <laughs> my PlayStation can't run it. Uh, yeah, dude. It's bigger than the Grand Theft Auto map. Come on. Like I, I feel like that's that that's how pirate that's how far piracy is gonna go. It's gonna go. Yep, yep. N Nintendo's gonna hate everybody, and they're gonna stop making games and start making pirate hats, just to spite everybody. Like it's getting to the point where uh, somebody actually recommended. Uh, on YouTube to watch Rise of the TMNT because it's actually a really good show, but it got, but it's uh, it got its second season cut in half, in which Amazon was already splitting the seasons by in half, like it says there are three episodes of or three seasons of Rise of the TMNT, and when I looked at it, it was the first season split into two, and the third season is its finale. Yeah, like, they, they ended the show because nobody was watching it, and I was like, nobody's watching it because everyone that's young doesn't watch cable anymore. Like, the, that's how you make it available was cable. If you put it on a streaming service, you, you could probably get a lot of people who watch it. It's how I actually watched Steven Universe, is because it came out on cable. You, could pro you can find Thundercats, Roar, Amazing World of Gumball, all these Cartoon Network shows on cable. And now it's getting to the point where you can watch them on HBO Max. Like, they were advertising Adventure Time on HBO Max. And now Rising Ninja Turtles didn't live because uh, Nickelodeon's like, no, we're, it's, we're a cable television show. We will not make our shows available on, oh, it's called on satellite and cable. Seriously, if I just want cable, I'll just subscribe to YouTube TV. They charge less than cable, and I can get just as many channels. Will I do it? No. No. I'm not desperate for TV. I have Hulu. I have Netflix. Crunchyroll is free. Peacock is free. I have Amazon Prime also, so I can get TV shows there too. And then on top of that, if I buy them digitally, they're mine forever, whether I have the subscription to Amazon Prime or not. I'm not Disney Plus who... You can't like, you, like you can't watch certain things for free. Seriously, Disney Plus can make so many people happy if they make their stuff for free. And by that I mean, uh, if they if it worked like Amazon Prime. Oh, it, because you have a a Disney Plus uh, what's called a subscription, you can now 
watch uh, Mulan for free. Everybody else has to pay 30 bucks. Hmm. Probably get, they probably get their subscriptions back. A lot of people said that after The Mandalorian, they just, uh, like, because Disney knew if they put the entire season out at once, they would lose their subscribers, so they did the weekly release of Mandalorian for that reason. So for like seven weeks straight, they had people subscribing just for the Mandalorian, and then at the same time, boom, fell off the face of the earth. I think that was hilarious. Disney probably don't think so. They're just like... So you're the jerk encouraging people to delete their uh, Disney Plus account after they're done with it. I mean, yeah. Save money, man. CW made their entire app for free. There is, like, no premium membership. I just learned to watch... I just want to watch it on a laptop because it will have an ad blocker on it. So I can just skip the ad and just watch the show as it was meant to be watched. No ads. And I will... And I'm a firm believer of that. I'm also spoiled with the fact that... Uh, uh, what's called... I'm also spoiled to no ads. Netflix did that to me. Hey, so Marcus, have you checked out the Zoids TV show on Netflix? I don't know if you remember Zoids growing up. I definitely do. So I wonder if you if you got curious enough to check out what Zoids was. Yeah, so I don't know if you remember. Do you remember Zoids as a kid? Like you were, pro you were, you were teeny tiny when that show came out. But it did a lot of reruns uh, when we were that when you were young. And I mean, it did a lot of reruns. Okay, so the very first Zoids that America was introduced to, it was basically a Gundam, but if Gun but instead of Gundams, uh, it was uh, animals. So basically everyone's riding around in their own Power Rangers Zord. And uh, basically what ended up happening is that uh, it was a competition. And in that competition, people were going, oh hey, uh, it's a Zoid competition. Oh, what they would do is they had teams that would just go and battle each other and see who could mess up their monster the most. And Interestingly enough, everybody had their there were everybody had their own pilot. And this one guy, his name was uh uh what was his name? Blitz something. I'm going to call him Blitz for now. Or is a bit thunder, something like that. I keep forgetting his name, but he was this blonde, he was like the spaz of a guy and he was stealing uh he was stealing scrap metal off of Zoids in battle and selling it for profit. Because, you know, people did that. After a battle, they would go and they would steal scrap uh, they would steal scrap metal and go sell it. And uh, one day he gets caught breaking into uh, a team's base. And then they asked him, hey, what's that Zoid? I've never seen that before. And they said, well, it's called a Liger Zero. And it doesn't let anybody pilot it. It's really weird. And they're like, really? Yeah, nobody p can pilot the Liger because for this reason. Oh, okay. So they went and they looked up the reason why, and apparently the liger was a very was it for some reason this liger had a personality, and it only found it only let uh, a pilot it chose basically a pilot that's willing to uh, lead a team to use it. And they tried so many ways to weaponize it because the only weapons it had was a gun, was a small uh, gun pistol on the on the bottom of its belly, and then it had a la uh, a laser claw. Yeah, I know it doesn't ring a bell. So basically, they do this competition and they try attaching a cannon onto the top of it, but all it did was just slow down Liger. So 
Liger eject, so he, they had Liger eject the turret, and next thing you know, he became fast again. They're like, oh hey, Liger's doing stuff. Way to go, Liger. And then they decided to give it armor, so it became Schneider Liger, which is basically they get attached a lot of, they made it orange and attached a bunch of blades to it. Then they made a Li Liger Jaeger. Yeah, they, they, for some reason they called it by the German names. They called it Jaeger, which gave it like a big old jet pack and made it like super fast. So you would never see its uh, strike laser claw out of nowhere. Yeah, it was, it was a pretty dope anime. It was like one of those uh, rare animes where the dub was actually really good. And then they had one called Liger Panzer. Liger Zero Panzer. Which it get, got this green artillery armor and just went ballistic. I mean, literally, it carried the entire uh, U.S. military on its back. It caused the Liger to overheat all the time when he, cared, when he would walk. And then after he fired all the ballistics, immediately Liger would just let go of all that armor because it can no longer hold the armor. And it was one of my favorite animes growing up because it came out around the same time as an anime called G Gundam, which you've probably heard me talk about, where it was basically giant robot competitions. Um, and that's actually around the time that these were becoming more common because a show called Metabots came out where they had little, ro little uh, child-sized robots attacking each other in an effort to... Uh, compete and be in the and be in the top robot competition and this one guy and then later on they found out that for some reason or another certain metabots had personalities but then they started acting out on their own like meta b was very unique because he hated being outside of his body because he loved he, he was a every every one of their personalities came from a coin and it popped into their back and it became a bot. Most of the most of the bots were very subservient, and they had personalities, but they were kind of like, uh, we only act whenever my uh, master commands it. And that's how that, that's how most of the show was. Meta B was just like, I don't care who you are, or what I am. I just know I am a beautiful robotic being, and you're a spazoid. Leave me the f alone. And you go get me my chocolate milk. But you can't drink chocolate milk. You don't have a mouth or a digestive system. I didn't ask what my digestive system was. I asked you to go get me my chocolate milk. And here we are today. Getting a robot his chocolate milk. That wasn't an actual joke in the show. But just, just to kind of give you an idea. And Metabots was... Uh, it was, in its own way, it was one of the better uh, shows. And believe it or not, it wasn't even on Cartoon Network. It was actually on, uh, at first it was called Fox Family, and then it became ABC Family. And Metabots became one of their, uh, hot, hot, what's called, their top-rated shows. Absolutely loved it. Oh, snap. Okay, uh, I lost my bed. And my wood. There are things I should have done and things I shouldn't have done. Tearing down my walls was one of those things I shouldn't have done. Yeah. Like, like whenever I think, yeah, well, I think one day I was talking to my friend Sam if he ever watched a show called Metabots. A lot of people surprisingly didn't remember it. I feel like the only reason why I watched it because I was one of those kids that got that had the uh um that what's called that had that grew up with the advantage of having uh um satellite tv not everybody gets everybody gets like abc and fox but nobody got like abc family or fox i felt like that that's why i lucked out and got to watch a lot of great anime growing up and they always did reruns too like beyblade and all that and all that good jazz and here's the thing, like, the Metabot show was kind of popular. It kind of also wasn't. I don't recall how popular the show ever got. But I do recall that uh, somebody went and, like, 
some producer was just basically like, oh, this is a great show, all the kids will love it. And they did. It, it did well in Japan for a little while. And it actually had a longer history in Japan, obviously, because it's a Japanese show. But what made the what made it really interesting though was the fact that well Metabots Yeah. It, it was a show that everybody wanted to play. I think Kevin bought uh had a, what's called used to have a uh, toys of it like we had toys of it and it was like it was actually a card game where you had like like you had cards for every pieces like the show advertised that you can basically build a meta bot using certain pieces an example was a uh, meta the main the, the main bot uh, he had uh, some beetle like structures and Every time you won uh, in a Metabot fight, instead of giving out money like in Pokemon, you gave out pieces of your Metabot's armor. So in order to get that armor back, you either have to win the Metabot uh, thing, or you had to go and uh, win the Metabot armor, or you had to go buy the Metabot's armor back, like from a store. Or you had to like switch it out. Like at one point, uh, Metabee lost the battle and he was really upset so they had to go and rebuy his le to go they had to go not rebuy his legs because he was a very cheap metabot like they made fun of him at the very beginning because he was a very cheap metabot and he hated the fact that he hated the fact because he goes he says that he has a very beautiful body and he was such a sassy robot too metapee had a great personality it actually got to the point where, uh, like, he sat at the family table all the time, and the, they always, they never questioned it why he was a member of the family, and he refused to leave his body because what kids did with their metabot was they would put the met, they would put their metabot in their in a body. Uh, I guess that's the wrong term to use. They had the every metabot had its own meta coin is what they called it, and the meta coin allowed the bot to rest inside the watch of their owner. Like the owner had a watch, and as they're inside the watch, right? Yeah, they're inside the watch, and the metabot can go easily go uh, transport. It can be easily transported, so they can leave the metabots at home. But the Metabot just stays dormant inside the coin. Metabee refused to leave the body. Because he saw... At first he saw his partner was a spaz. But he loved fighting so he just put up with the, with his partner. But then later on he says, I'm your partner. Uh, I don't... I want to be treated as your equal. Not someone who's subservient to you. And they eventually did something called that was called the Metaforce later. Which basically became a great power that only uh, close Metabot uh, users could use. And everybody absolutely didn't like this guy. Because he was a street kid out of nowhere. That all of a sudden could use, that could all of a sudden use a Metabot. And he tried his hardest to get a Metabot. And he saved up his allowance for like forever to get one. But he just couldn't get one. Eventually, they sell him a cheap uh, Metabot copy, and everybody laughed at him because it was an unknown robot in circulation. Yeah, it was like basically, uh, it's like going, it was like basically going to Dollar General and buying a knockoff Transformers toy instead of buying the big corporate Hasbro ones, you know? Oh, this isn't Transformers, these are Transmorphers. Yeah, it, it uh, same thing pretty much. That's what Metabee was, and then he started kicking everyone's ass with Metabee. And then at some points, they uh, he would go and uh, give Metabee different arms. Like, oh snap, you're fighting a person that's a, that uh, swims in water. Here, I'm gonna give you these legs. And then he would get legs that allowed him to swim underwater. Yeah, it was a lot, and the whole point behind the the game itself, it was like a 
board game slash card game, each game, each uh, piece had its own card and said this is what it did, and then you had to add the values up together. And so if you like, uh, so if you're defeated and like, if your HP drops and defeats in battle, uh, pretty much it was over with. And then on top of that, the toys that went with the cards, yeah, it's so you can visually see everything, kind of like in, uh, it's kind of like how people have like uh, models for D and D. Like, oh, okay, th so this is your, this is this person. So it's kind of like that. <sighs> I miss Metabots. I don't even know if you can even watch a show anymore. Knowing my luck, I'm going to end up, the only uh, Metabot circulation thing I could find is probably... Uh, an obscure Game Boy title where it drops the frame rate to like 12 frames a second so you just get a blurry image of Metabots. I don't know if you knew that existed Marcus but there it is. You could they had uh, a Game Boy they had a thing they had a video now on the Game Boy and they used to drop the resolution to the to the games a lot and the only full-length movies you could watch on the Game Boy cartridge was uh, Shrek and Shrek 2. But it look but it looked awful. Especially the video now. So it was before cell phones existed and they were trying to basically make what cell phones would eventually make. And I forget and it's kind of funny back then that was good. That was awesome. If you weren't cool unless you had a video now that played Lizzie McGuire. And now everyone is like this is awful. Why would anyone settle for less? Sorry, kids. That's all we had. Even, like, I couldn't tell you how many lectures Dad gave us going, We never had a video now. Do you want to know what we had? We had Sit Your Ass Down right now. It doesn't have LAN? Really? So wait, that means you, can you not plug in your computer then? Like that's stupid. Did they really go entirely wireless? Not everybody has the privilege uh, of wireless, man. Uh, yeah, because I know they went. I know whenever everyone switched over to uh, Wi-Fi. Yeah, like I know when they made the switch to Wi-Fi, they were saying, "Well, you don't need to get a router anymore." But that's just messed. I don't know how to feel about that, man. I'm sorry. Back in my day, having LAN meant, meant something. It meant I didn't get kicked off of Xbox. That's stupid. Wait, but the telephone cord's the same as the LAN cable, is it not? Or no. Dude, you know what? Dial it up. Dial up. I know what you know. I know you know what dial up is. Dial up. That's what you got to use, man. And tell them, hey, you, you gave me no choice. Dial up. Yeah. Sounds like something. Uh, sounds like. It sounds like BS. And why a telephone cable? Nobody has a landline anymore. Come on. You want to know the only thing I know that has a landline? is just businesses. Businesses have landlines. Yeah, so it make, if it makes you feel any better, uh, Marcus, back in my day, um, we had the land cable insertion, but here's the problem. The... Um, what was it? Xbox Xbox did not work at all. Like, I wanted to play like if I wanted to play uh, something on my Xbox, I wasn't allowed to play anything on my Xbox. They basically told me, uh, "Oh, it doesn't work." Well, basically, tough shit. <laughs> cool. Oh, so you use the LAN cable for the Switch? Okay, I never thought about that. I don't have that problem because I don't play online on the Switch. I think the only time I've ever done it was probably whenever uh, me and Chloe played Smash Bros. 
with uh, Brandon and the rest of them. But yeah, that really blows, man. Oh, I like this door. I had to pick on it. Time to do it night night. Yeah, no, like the land used to be really bad too. Like, you want to play on your Xbox Live? You can't. It kick you off, straight up. Not without without warning too. It would just kick you off for ten minutes. Dude, it's just it's not you. It's a Switch, or it's Nintendo actually. N N Nintendo just has a it just has an awful online uh, everything. So yeah, you're not the only one. The only reason why I don't have a problem is because whenever I do play online on uh, on the Switch, it's Pokemon. It's really it. Yeah, I, I play Pokemon online. So uh, whenever I play Pokemon and stuff, like I don't have a problem. I've had problems with Yu-Gi-Oh, and that's pretty much it. And that's just because it took forever for it to input our turns. No, no, no. I get you. It does. because, But that's also because it's like a marketing... It, it, it's what Nintendo believes is that video games shouldn't be played. They have a very strong belief system on video games. Like, video, game, if, video games shouldn't be computers. If you want to play games on the computer, go get PC. Go, go spend $1,000... On a on a what's called on a PC. That's how Nintendo views views everything. And if you want what's called if if you want PC gaming from us, you're not getting it. That's why they are so heavy on using cartridges and only porting over some games. Why does it? And yeah, it's like a. And even then, Nintendo to a certain extent does have a point on not doing that though. Because, think about it this way, everybody is so excited to get the PS5 because the graphics look so good, but all the games get, all these games though, like the PS5 has probably only been alive for about, what, almost six years, but now the games are getting so complex on PS4 that the PS4 can't run anything? Yeah, and so to me, I believe Nintendo has a point when it comes to making games. So, there's a time where I'm kind of like, okay, I can agree with what Nintendo saying here, but... And they even point out, there, there's got to be a point where it stops, you know? Like, you can't just rely on, uh... Like, you, like you can't just... You, AAA games shouldn't have to be, uh... With all these graphics and stuff. They, they've proved it. Like, the only... The biggest game Nintendo has made since the Switch's release has been Zelda. And Zelda doesn't require, like, all the processing power that, uh, like, Grand Theft Auto and all these, and Last of Us 2 need. And that's the crazy part. They built a, ga a game bigger than these games combined. I mean, you know, map speaking wise, not graphically speaking. But they built these big games that don't need all, that don't need all that stuff. And they even pointed it out, like, yeah, we don't need that. I don't know what you guys are all about, but this is our biggest game. And we can run it a hundred times better than y'all can. It's if you ever pay attention uh, to what they have as far as content goes, it's all about... Uh, it, it's all about... Can, um, that's the thing that does suck, though, like, uh, later games have a hard time running certain games. For example, my I have the first version of the Switch that came out, so my Switch has a hard time rendering Minecraft. Like, even I think even Chloe's Switch came out, I, I bought it that same year. It has a hard time rendering Minecraft just because, uh, uh, what was it, uh, yeah, it has a hard time rendering Minecraft. And that's just because Minecraft is a big, is a, it can be a big game. It can be a big boy game. So, yeah, uh, excuse me. Minecraft's a big boy game. So, 
Uh, my, so the Switch has a hard time running it. In fact, I've had problems where the where the software just closes and says, "Sorry, we can't run this game because it's this big." So you, so everyone's had to rely on buying a new Switch, Nintendo Switch, and uh, yeah, everyone's had to buy a new Nintendo Switch just so that they could. Uh, um, what's the term I'm looking for? Just so they could run Minecraft properly. Because I have a problem where I'm playing Minecraft and like, I'm on a boat, right? And I get to the next area, and the next area hasn't rendered yet. And I'm like, what? Why hasn't my area rendered yet? And so I'm over here kind of laughing at it a little bit. Like, come on, man. I'm, tr I'm just trying to play some Minecraft here. And you're over here not rendering. And like... Like, and we have to wait for it to render so we don't get lost either. But that's also because Minecraft is a big beefy boy game too. Like, just like the only reason why Minecraft doesn't crash systems, it crashes mine. It will crash the Switch sometimes. But the only reason why it doesn't is just because how low grade everything is. But it can load up so much that it, it it can overwhelm the system, the switch sometimes. It's rare, but it happens. Yeah, I understand, buddy. But I'm all I'm all t yeah. It's also because Nintendo believes that not everything should be online. Please go over to your friend's house and play Smash Bros. Don't don't rely on such things. That's how Nintendo. That's like Nintendo's uh, company policy. Yeah, yeah. That's also true too. Yeah, but dude, think about it. It's a third of what everybody else charges. You're literally paying for what you get. <laughs> It is a third of what everybody else charges. Like, if you want a full, like, if you wanted a full, uh, like, yeah, if you wanted a, like, uh, if you want a good game, if you want a good online play, you go to PlayStation or Xbox and pay 60 bucks. Nintendo's charging a third of a price, so you're paying for what you get, man. I'm sorry, bud, but yeah. I, I but I do agree though. Like, even though tw twenty bucks for a year is pretty cheap for online play, it it, it honestly should have just stayed free. That's my honest opinion on that. It, it it's one of those things that it should have just stayed free. Like, real life Peter Griffin should do a Grind My Gears episode about uh, Nintendo Switch's online play. I, I think he would get a lot of subscribers with that one. Like, hi, real life Peter Griffin here. You know what really grinds my gears? Nintendo online play. Seriously, you pay 20 bucks a year, which is a third of what you get from the other competitors, but you get crappy ass uh, online play. Seriously. You know, I have to play a Sonic just so that I could play. Uh, Smash Bros. Online? It's freaking ridiculous. And then you figure out it's got nothing to do with the Switch at all, and it's just the company itself. Like, Game Freak can run Pokemon smoothly in any version. And here you have Nintendo going, Nah, man, we gotta do something, because, you know, Pokemon's making us look bad. Full Pokemon's been making us look bad since 1996. What's your problem? And that is what really grinds my gears. <coughs> I would probably do a better uh, Peter Griffin, but I've been talking for like two hours straight, and yeah, everything hurts. Everything hurts. <sighs> and I'm only drinking coffee just so I can make myself hyper for you guys. Crafting the mines, crafting the mines, 
I got a little gas when I'm crafting the mines. Oh, uh, <laughs> I got one. Okay. Hi, real life Peter Griffin here. You know what really grinds my gears? Skyrim. Like seriously, this game's been out since the Xbox 360 and they keep remaking it for everything. Heck, Alexa's got its own version of Skyrim. It's freaking ridiculous. I don't know how many times that I need to play Skyrim on every different console. Seriously. And then on top of that, on top of that on the Alexa, you gotta t tell its command to everything. Let's please walk to this area. Oh, well, I need a heal. Well, I want to consume as much cheese wheels as I can. Yeah, and I gotta say it vocally. I don't know, who, I, I can't binge that for two hours without hurting my jaw. I swear, I feel like an adult entertainer after I'm done with playing Skyrim. And that is what grinds my gears. You know what else grinds my gears? I'm lost! <laughs> Okay, all I have to do is just find the blue flowers, red thorns. Blue flowers, red thorns. Uh, this would be so much easier if I wasn't colorblind. Blue flowers, red thorns. Hey, you gotta admit, that real life Peter Griffin stuff was pretty funny, though. I guess I gotta climb a mountain. Yeah, I don't know if you've ever followed his channel, but he actually does have a whole a channel called uh, where he does have grind my gears, and he reviews Sonic the Hedgehog and a bunch of other things. Like, there's actually a cutaway gag that he did. Uh, you know what grinds my gears? Coronavirus. And then he says Lois has to Lois has to work he has to work at Uber Eats just so that she can get some uh, j just so that we can get some income going. I lost my job at the Pawtucket uh, Ale, and as she comes home during the cutaway gag, he goes, he starts spraying her with the hose and goes, social distancing, social distancing. <laughs> I don't know. I, I saw an interview with him, and they said that he was, uh, that the one thing he really enjoyed was the fact that he got to play, or he, that at work, he's the impressions guy. Oh, crap. No, 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 no. Yeah, he, he does impressions at work, and he, he does more than just real-life Peter Griffin. The only reason why he got noticed for that, because he went to New York Comic Con... And uh, he dressed up as Peter Griffin because he just had everything on hand. And then he said at work, people he people ask him to do uh, his impressions of other cartoon characters. Like he he will do the entire Looney Tunes cast for you. It's just he's so famous with real life Peter Griffin. He makes people happy, so. He doesn't mind doing it at work, because he says, Oh, office jobs, it can be so boring and so hard. Why not just uh, make everyone's life easier and just do cartoon impressions? Even his boss is asking to do impressions of cartoon characters. And then whenever they found out he was real life Peter Griffin, oh my gosh. The, 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 he, uh, they just lit, that lit up their entire world. They had been working with the guy forever, and they didn't even realize, they didn't put two and two together until he went to a comic con. And that's what really grinds my gears. So, how's your first week back, Marcus? Uh, being in the dorms and whatnot. I thought you were going to be moving off campus.
Oh snap, I found a village. I'm raiding it. Okay, that's nice of you. Way to go. Yeah, honestly, bud, I'm going to tell you, uh, even though dorm, li dorm life isn't the best kind of life, it it's better than nothing, man. Yeah. Because you, you don't have to worry about having a roof over your head all the time or having t or struggling to have to eat. You can, or try to figure out your net when to get your next meal or whatever, because you just go in at the certain times you're allowed to go in and go. Oh hey, look, I got, I got, I can get some bread. Let's get some bread. So yeah, sorry, but I know you were looking forward to work to what's called to. I know you were looking forward to uh, moving in with your friend. It's a pretty big step in uh, college, but you know sometimes you got to do what you got to do. And there's a lot of potato here. There's a lot of potato. Cartography map. Nope, no need that. Mm -hmm. Always look on the bright side of life. <whistles> I'm singing this to you, buddy. Always look on the bright side of death. Life's a piece of shit when you look at it. <laughs> um, well, it's pretty, pretty good, man. It's been pretty chill. Um, I don't have to go very far to get to because everything's right there. I could literally, uh, if I wanted to, it's a five-minute walk to like Sonic or something. Stuff like that. And there's also strangely a shortage amount of chairs. Take a little bit out of Peter Griffin's uh, thing. There's a shortage of chairs. I don't know why, but there's always a shortage of chairs. Alright, I can add more to my garden. And I'm taking that one. Ah. This village seems empty, so my guess is that I live close enough to where everyone can die. There we go. Got the potato. What can I throw in here that I don't care about? Oak saplings, because I have a crap ton of them. Now I got gold nuggets. Oh my gosh, there was a delay there and it made me cringe so hard. Huh, he got stuck. Or he's fencing himself off from the rest of the world, that's a high possibility actually. Yeah, that's what I thought.
Ooh, I'm gonna need granite. I don't need string either, so I can go ahead and pick up all this. Hey. Okay, so it seems like every not everyone's dead. But this village is in pretty bad shape. It's because it has a shortage of chairs. I always hated the village breeding mechanic. You could breed villagers, but it involves having to, uh... Oh, what's the term I'm looking for? It involves having to, uh... Uh... Basically, it's how many doors are in. So, like, you could build a, a breeding box, pretty much, and just fill them with a crap ton of doors. And the villagers will go, will just breed on their own. Oh, I think after you give them an apple. Like, there, there, there's, like, like it, it's quite a breeding trick. Blue flowers, red thorns. Blue flowers, red thorns. Hold on, Shrek. I'm coming. Pumpkins. All right. I'll get rid of these uh, bones. Hold on, wait. Yeah, I gotta get rid of the bones. Uh, sorry I went silent there. Just giving myself kind of a break. Hey Marcus, give me a subject to talk about. Oh, huh, there we go. I found it. Uh, favorite anime. Um, I got a lot of those, dude. But that's okay. I kind of put you on the spot. But the next uh, favorite anime. Um, to me, that's kind of a tough one because I have a lot of favorite anime. I guess the one I want to talk about then it would probably be uh, uh, Kenichi, the Mightiest Disciple. The reason why that one, I have to say, has to be one of my favorites is because uh, it's a it's a Karate Kid show, basically. Like, if it's a, if Karate Kid had its own anime, except it's not all about karate; it's about different forms of martial arts. And it was an anime I learned to appreciate, um, especially since after its initial release. Um, <clears throat> Yeah, after it released, uh, or after, uh, oh, it released a lot. The only thing that sucks, though, is that it never got a continuation because the anime is really good. I mean, it got had an OVA, so I guess it, kind of, it has OVAs, but the only reason why they did the OVAs was because if they did a full-blown series, they couldn't do this full-blown series because the voice actress that uh, died in the car accident that played Mew Ferengi, 
Yeah, she died tragically. And the company and, and Japanese companies don't like to continue with uh, by replacing the main voice actress. That that's just what they're about. The so I so to an extent as an anime fan, I totally understand where they're coming from when they do that. It's very unfortunate. And the OVAs, like, I haven't watched them because uh, Funimation doesn't want to dub them. And I would love it if they dubbed the Kanichi because I really enjoyed the dub a lot just because they chose... <laughs> they, 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 that had excellent casting, in my opinion, for Kanichi. Um, and I, I began to... And, be, and before I move on to the next subject... Um, the, the, what's it called, it became uh, my favorite anime even after I learned mar uh, martial arts because I read the manga to kind of figure out the story a little bit afterwards. And it became my favorite because I didn't realize how grounded in reality, uh, some of it's grounded in reality, Kanichi was uh, in the world of martial arts. Alright, I guess I'll move on to favorite Smash character. My favorite Smash character is, uh... It's hard to say, because my favorite Smash character always changes in, uh, according to game. So, like, uh... When I first played Melee, my favorite Smash character was, uh... Kirby. I enjoyed Kirby a lot in Melee. In the original game, it went... It, it kind of just went to be Kirby, still. Um... Yeah, it became Kirby. I it's because I enjoyed the anime Kirby a lot, so I played as Kirby, and it was the same in regular Smash Bros. I enjoyed Kirby a lot, so I just played as Kirby. So there's not much difference there, um, as far as anime goes. But then it got to uh, what was it? Uh, um, let me think of other things. Uh, in Smash Bros. Brawl, my fa one of my favorite characters became Pokemon Trainer for my love of Pokemon. If that wasn't obvious. But yeah, I had a love for Pokemon. I could totally did this wrong. I just realized I did I'm I'm being I'm basically pulling a Kevin. I'm or not pulling a Kevin. I won't say I'm pulling a Kevin. But if Kevin were here and he actually knew what I was doing, he'd be like, That's inefficient, bro. Anyways, uh so in Smash Bros. four for the th for the 3DS, it be or for the brawl, it became because uh, I, I always switch it up. But basically, in brawl, it was Pokemon Trainer. And after I got to play as Pokemon Trainer, I thought that was like the coolest thing ever. At least I thought. So let's see, um, I guess if I was going to do more Smash Bros. characters, let's go with uh, Smash Bros. 4, which came out on the, D3, on the 3DS and uh, Wii U. I gotta say, for all, probably for that one, it was, uh, at first it was Mega Man, and then they brought in, and then it switched to DLC characters when they brought in Ryu, and then Cloud. And that's actually, and that's actually out of all the DLC characters I bought. I didn't buy all the DLC characters. I only bought Ryu, Bayonetta, Cloud, and uh, what was the uh, other characters' names? I, there's a bunch of characters' names in that one. Oh whoa. Uh, because I didn't buy Mewtwo. And I didn't buy Lucas. I didn't feel like it was worth buying a characters. That should already be free, and I, I told people that that was my feelings on the Smash Bros. characters. I was like, I'm sorry, these characters should be free, and they said, why? And I told them, because one, wait, oops, I think I messed up. So three, four, five, six, seven, eight. No, I'm dead. I told them those are characters should be free because they existed in other they existed in other Smash Bros. content. It's basically like uh, saying. You have to pay uh, this much money to get uh, Pokemon, th this amount of Pokemon back in uh, 
in your Pokemon game. Which I kind of realize that's probably the problem that everybody's having with the DLC, but you don't have to. It's free to get all the Pokemon that are in the DLC back. But basically, it's like, it's like uh, oh, well, if you want to get Pikachu... So Pikachu's our flagship character, but if you want to get Eevee, which is our secondary flagship character, you have to pay um, three bucks to get that character back, just so you can so you can have Eevee and evolve it. And then, and then, like, say if they made the mistake, oh, uh oh, we didn't mean to uh, put in Jolteon, and people can breed Jolteon to get Eevee. So instead, they just make Jolteon not non-breedable, and then everybody goes, "What the heck kind of BS is that?" Yeah, that, that's kind of how it feels with certain characters. Um, in Smash Bros, at least. And so, for me, seeing Lucas and Mewtwo, and I think it was Roy, I was like, no, they existed in past games. It's not worth, I'm not paying three, uh, an additional two or three dollars just to get characters that should have been free in the first place. But whenever Cloud, Corrin, Bayonetta, and Ryu came in, I was like, okay, so this is DLC worth paying for because they're new characters. So I went ahead and got, I think I got all of them, but I was also very upset because Corrin was so broken at the very start, because all you gotta do is just do with his counter, and then bam, and boom. No! Oh! Oh, gosh. Why did they put the duck in the oven? Dang it. No, my land. My beautiful, beautiful land. You guys are monsters! I'm trying to lay a foundation. So yeah. Um, so I have like a whole rant on Smash Bros. 4. But basically it became... It went from Mega Man to, to Charizard for a little bit. I played as Charizard a lot, but I felt like uh, I got cheated out of Pokemon Trainer for that game. Especially since there was like a whole thing where Charizard could go Mega without the trainer. And I'm like, you're going against Pokemon lore? Come on, guys. And th there wasn't a lot of lore to that game at the time whenever they had introduced Megas. But it, it made you want to cringe and go, come on, guys. You, you can do better than that. Y'all are better than that. And then, uh, what was the other thing? Um, there's a lot uh, of other stuff, too. That I have to admit that... It, oh, yeah, it was... Uh, um, Smash Bros. 5. It, it, it remained Cloud just because Cloud was in the game and I already knew how to play Cloud. But as far as new characters go, I really enjoy... Uh, I enjoy uh, Hero from Dragon Quest. And they all have different names, but the specific one is... He they just call him Hero, the Hero. Yeah, like I actually, had to, I actually went and looked up all the Dragon Quest character names. And the one that they chose was Dragon Quest XI's character... And his name is Luminary. And then they had Dragon Quest 3 character, which I forgot what his name is, but I have Dragon Quest 3. Like, I always wanted to play the Dragon Quest series since I was a kid. I didn't see much to a reason for it as an adult until, like, much until, like, Smash Bros. came out. And I was like, you know what? I'm going to get a Dragon Quest game. And they had the first three Dragon Quests uh, that was ported from mobile to uh, Switch some time ago so I went ahead and played it and I enjoyed it a lot it, it makes me miss old school RPGs where they gave you a stick and a pot lid and wish you best of luck I don't remember if the pot lid was used as an actual shield but you can get in the original Dragon Quest game actually it's true for all for the first Dragon Quest games they gave you a stick and wished you the best of luck so I don't know if you watch other streams where I make that joke Marcus where 
I miss RPGs where they gave you a stick and wish you a best of luck. Yeah, that, that's where it came from, was Dragon Quest. Because Dragon Quest did that. Um, the other... Yeah, um, and then Banjo and Kazooie were a lot of fun because... I know Banjo and Kazooie were actually meant to be in the N64 version of the game. A lot of other games... Um, yeah, stick best weapon, though. Tell me about it. Nobody ever talks about Nail Bat from Final Fantasy VII. That's the closest thing as getting a stick in the Final Fantasy games. See, even I carry a stick at all times in, in, in uh, Minecraft. You see, your sword can break, but sticks? Sticks are forever. Then, uh... It's kind of funny. I think I want to say there's an RPG out there where the bait, where the starting weapon is a stick, and you can make starting weapon into best get into best weapon. Because uh, I always told Kevin it, it took it took 20 years. I don't know if I've ever told you this, but in Final Fantasy III, the worst class, the worst best class was Onion Knight. Because you and it was the starting class. It wasn't Freelancer, but it was Onion Knight, and then because and the reason why it was so bad was because uh, buying the strategy guide, you didn't buy the strategy guide to read the strategy guide. You bought the strategy guide to keep it forever and ever and ever and never use it. That was the whole point. Like, the only people that would use a strategy guide were the people who wanted to beat uh, The Legend of Zelda in five hours. Um... But basically the reason why uh, the, the stick became like the best weapon after a while or whatever, or the reason why a stick is best weapon, but uh, Onion Knight was the best class because it had, or the worst class because it had all this level up, right? <clears throat> you, had, you leveled up, but you didn't get a lot of stats from Onion Knight. It was considered awful by a lot of standards until you reach level 90 and then your stats skyrocket. To the point when you reach level 99 with Onion Knight, like the class level, it became best weapon. Yeah, it became best, uh, best, it became the best thing ever. And everyone was just like, wait, what? Like, I thought everyone kind of, like, and people did, it took tw people 20 years to figure this out. And the only reason why I figured it out was because somebody owned Final Fantasy 3 on, uh, NES and they decided to complete they basically pulled a completionist and they decided let's see what happens if you max out Onion Knight and they maxed out Onion Knight and now they're like confused on why this wasn't made aware of the best why this was best class and I thought I thought it was actually one that's what actually makes me like play old school RPGs because the fact that there are some RPGs that are so old, are that are old and still have secrets like there are people who are still convinced that you can revive Aerith in the original Final Fantasy 7 and there are people who to this day try to figure out how to do it April Fools jokes are dedicated to this Everything get dedicated to it. But yeah. And then, uh, uh else for, and it all, this all started from Smash Bros. 5. Um, I guess the other thing that was part of, that I think is good for Smash Bros. 5, um, I can't remember. Yeah. And then there were just some characters I play once and I just never bother with them again. Um, Byleth was one of them. I tried maining Byleth, but I got bored with it really quickly. I get bored with some of the Fire Emblem characters, not because like they're boring people to play, but not by far. It's just because they're one of those characters that they're easy to get good with. You know what I mean? Like, they're easy to get good with because they're pretty good all-around characters. And so, whenever you get good with, uh, with, uh, with what's called, with those characters, you're just kind of like, meh. 
it kind of gets a little boring and then all of a sudden that's all you're maining is uh fire emblem characters yeah shulk shulk uh shulk's a lot of fun i had a friend who mained shulk and like uh yeah i had a friend who mained shulk and they absolutely love shulk I think it was uh, Cordell and some other friends that I know that bought the uh, fire bought that series just so they could play as Shulk. Yeah, Xenoblade. That's what the series is called, Xenoblade. Yeah, they they all play. Yeah, that was the only reason they played. And I was just like, what? I guess that's a good reason. <laughs> Because I mean, I bought I, I bought more I bought uh, games for much less or played games for much less. Like uh, like um, what was it? Uh, I'll try to think of a good example. Oh, here's one. Um, a YouTuber recommended uh, uh, Pokemon Ranger Shadows of Omnia. And they said it's a harder game to find, but basically when they found Pokemon Ranger, they had a lot of fun playing it. It costs a lot of money to get now because the Pokemon Ranger series, you know, most Pokemon side games get overlooked a lot because it, it's a Pokemon side game. And here's the funny part. Um, I gave my brother, I, I gave Kevin Pokemon Ranger Shadows of Omnia as a gift. Like I randomly went to Deja Vu and there was a Nintendo DS light that was white with a football sticker on it that somebody had given away. And they just didn't relatively care and what they had, so I just picked it up and I probably spent like 15 bucks on it. And I gave it to Kevin and I was like, here you go, bud. I don't relatively care for Pokemon Ranger, so here you go. So, and he played it. He was playing it. He was having the time of his life with it. And I thought I was glad he enjoyed it. Then I forgot he had the game. And so when the game came out, I told my brother, I think I want to try this Pokemon Ranger Shadows of Omnia because this YouTuber recommended it. And he's like, dude, you gave it to me. What? I didn't even realize I had the copy of the game until it was like already too late. So it was like, so it, it kind of becomes that thing where uh, I don't know how to react to the situation kind of thing. Oh boy. Sun's going down tomorrow. You can only sleep at night. Yeah. I actually want to play Xenoblade because of Smash Bros. And just because, like, uh, but there's a bunch of games that like it that exist. I guess you can say. I'll probably talk to mom here in a bit. She kept, she texted me like a couple hours ago and I was streaming, so yeah. Um like I wanted to play I wanted to play Earthbound not just because uh just because just because of Smash Bros. I wanted to play Earthbound just because uh um I wanted to play Earthbound for the re for the reason that uh um, I saw a bunch of YouTubers wanting to play it, and they gave a whole synopsis about it. And the fact that the entire game is literally about uh, is about uh, aborting the main villain, like going there, basically uh, pulling a fetus deletus. According to the according to the fan theories, you're pulling a fetus deletus on the main bad guy because he's so powerful in his adult form. You have to go when he's at his weakest, and it's in his fetus. But in order to go back in time... And it's, and it's a pretty dark game, despite uh, having cheerfully bright characters, too. And that's what I like. G games that are... that uh, that's, uh, That are... Uh, um, what's the term I'm looking for? Subvert your expectations? Yeah. It's kind of like that. Like, uh, I think, what was it? Uh, when I was a kid, one of the first things that subverted my expectation, I guess was probably Digimon. And, that, and I'm only bringing that up because I've been watching it a lot, for example. But there was the uh, series that... Uh, Digimon Tamers that came out. And the Digimon before the, that series... It was marketed in, in, in the U.S. as Digimon Season 3. 
And before you ask, no, there wasn't a season four for a long time. Um, by the time season four came out, most people were already grown up and didn't care. Um, so they had a Digimon season four or season three, and it subverted a lot of people's expectations because it had nothing to do with the original show, except that the original show is a TV show in their world like ours. And it subverts your expectations because it's really dark. And the kids will actually have real problems to solve. Like, uh... Takato, uh... Is afraid to digivolve Geomon because Geomon turned into, uh... Not a... I won't say a mindless monster. But Geomon tends to loot... Whenever Geomon fights, he tends to get very wild and aggressive. Like a dinosaur. And as he digivolves more and more, that's exactly what happens. He becomes wild and aggressive like a dinosaur. And so one day, Takato was very scared that Geomon was going to kill him and eat him. I'm not kidding. Like, he actually says, if I'm going to die, I'm glad it was my buddy Geomon who did it. But I guess that, that's what happens with creations. They eventually come back and kill you. And Geomon started, or Growlmon started crying because... He's like, please don't be scared of me, Takato. It's still silly old me. And that's like Takato's... That's always Takato's main fear is that every time Geomon digivolves, he's going to lose a piece of Geomon. And he's no longer the innocent... Uh, he's no longer the innocent uh, bre uh, bread-munching uh, Digimon. He's just going to become an aggressive Digimon. And the thing is, his fear comes to life but not because Geomon digivolved that way on purpose. Takato pushed him to do it. And uh, it, whenever he, whenever Takato, every time Takato digivolves Geomon, Geomon gets more aggressive. But Takato has a, such a strong connection with uh, Geomon, it gets to the point where Takato starts feeling Geomon's uh, pain, like physical damage. And so when he Matrix digivolves Geomon to War Growlmon. Uh, Takato started becoming just as wild as War Growlmon, and Takato just uh, started giving uh, um, commands to Gilmon as uh, his tamer. But like you hear him growl and start roaring and he's screaming at the enemy, and he makes all the slashing noises, <clears throat> and he finally says Atomic Blaster, and Gilmon just does that Atomic Blaster. Or, Gra or Growlmon at this point. And then the point where he dark digivolves. Um, yeah. Basically, uh, Bialzamon, uh kills... Is, is trying to kill all the Tamers. Because he was given great power to do so. By the, one of the, by the Digimon Sovereign. And because he was given uh, power to do so... <coughs> His, uh, he only had one goal, kill the kids. And he was given his mega form, Bialzamon. And he ends up killing uh, Leomon, who was, the mo who was a very kind-hearted Digimon. And if you watch the first series, he's a very uh, important character um, in the first series. And it's funny, because like, I used to have a big old thing about his uh, importance in the original show. Only to figure out that he doesn't appear as often as I thought he did. Same goes for uh, Waymon in uh, in that show. It's funny how you remember shows differently as a child and then you watch it again as an adult. War, uh... But anyways, Takato gets so angry at Bialzamon, he forces Di Giyomon to digivolve into Magidramon. And that's when he realizes that his worst, uh, <clears throat> his worst, uh, his his worst dream became fruition. He lost Gilmon to to uh, to his Digivolution, and he was no longer the the bread munching knucklehead that he always loved. He later de-digivolves him back to Gilmon, and he realizes that together they could do anything. So they bio merge or Digimon fusion into uh, um, into Gallantmon, and so 
Yeah, so it wasn't uh, Guillaumon becomes Gallantmon. Guillaumon with Takato becomes Gallantmon. And it's a pretty crazy show. It, and then that's where like the show like subverts your expectations because it's the kids team up with like the kids build a much stronger connection to their Digimon in the show than any of the other ones too. Especially like uh, where they play the uh, uh, especially the shows that go but friendship is power and that's what a lot of the Digimon shows were and the kids just watched the Digimon helplessly and they made the di and they made the kids do as absolutely whatever they could to make their Digimon powerful so the kids weren't completely helpless or useless in certain situations <clears throat> and then they had the kids bio merge with the Digimon and they fought together, so it was actually really cool to see. And it's hilarious because Takato will always design... Uh, he, he will design Guillaumon's Digivolution, but the but the digital world goes, Nah, we, we have something else for him, fam. We're, you're going to like this one. And all he does is just a more grown-up version of Guillaumon every time. And then, the, and then I was explaining it to, uh, and then the, I found out that the person that that uh, wrote the show, he's a he's a Lovecraftian mythos writer, like he absolutely loved the idea of the Lovecraft of the H.P. Lovecraft stories, doing all the Cthulhu mythos. So he added it into Digimon, and all I could think of was that explains so freaking much. Because after, because they had to go when they make Digimon, they have to go by certain designs that the that that is given to them. But then it started uh, making uh, things like uh, certain things are or certain things that we see are perspective, such as uh, the perspective of good and evil. They try to really play the perspective of good and evil on the show. Like, uh, the there's the Digimon that represent the Chinese Zodiac, and they're referred to as the Devas. And the Devas are each of them. There's twelve of them, each of them representing um, what's called a, a Zodiac animal, and. They ha they're designed with a lot of uh, Chinese inspiration. The only one that didn't get designed for the show specifically was Antillamon, and that's just because Antillamon was made for the Digimon the movie. And the and Antillamon's actually the bunny deva, is a rabbit deva or the rabbit zodiac. And actually, instead of the them killing that deva. Because they kill all the devas, all 11 of them. The 12th deva, the rabbit deva, actually becomes one of the kids' Digimon partners. Specifically, like, I think it was a six-year-old girl named Susie in the show. And her older brother, Henry, was very protective and says, You need to get away from that Digimon. It's a deva. And then she holds up a Digivice crying, saying, She's my partner and I'm her tamer. You can't keep us apart. And yeah, and because they had to deal with a very big uh, problem, the the sovereign that gave her power took her took it away from her, only to give it back because they were like, "Hold on, we're gonna die. We need all the help we can get." And Susie becomes one of the more badass tamers. And the thing is, death in that show actually has consequence. So like. The kids try to keep the Digimon as safe as possible, and they do what and they do whatever it takes to make them safe. Sometimes they make knucklehead moves, though. <sighs> Man, my house is coming out pretty nicely.
I guess the other things like, I guess I want to talk about is Dungeons and Dragons real quick. Uh, I feel like I messed up a year ago. I was uh, out of town visiting my girlfriend. We went to, uh, what was it? We went to San Antonio and went to a place called Half Price Books where you can buy used books and new books. And I was looking at, I was looking at manga and role-playing games while we were waiting for her stuff to be processed because she was selling books and DVDs and to get store credit. <clears throat> I messed up because uh, I felt like even if I got it, no one would want to play with me. And I felt really bad after I told Kevin about it because he said I would have played with you. And I was like, damn, that sucks. I found a, co a used copy of Advanced Dungeons and Dragons, and for those that don't know, that's version 2 of Dungeons, Dungeons and Dragons. And we are currently in version 5. And it's, pro and it's probably one of the more famous one, famous copies. Because uh, Dan Harmon used Advanced Dungeons and Dragons. Uh, go, 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 go. Sorry, uh, try throat. <sighs> because uh, he used Advanced Dungeons and Dragons to... Uh, do his D and D inspired episodes in uh, the community, and I want to say it's the same version that they use in uh, in his show Harmon Quest, but I'm not sure because I haven't personally watched a lot of Harmon Quest to determine whether or not it was uh, it was if it was five E or if it was uh, yeah if it was five uh, E or if it was Advanced Dungeons and Dragons. Because there's different versions of it. Like, uh, there was a uh, 3.5 is one of the more popular ones, and it got branded and rebranded into Pathfinder. Then it was a. Uh, then there's the most infamous and unpopular Stepchild, which is uh, D and D four, the fourth edition. Which didn't last long at all. Fourth edition came out whenever I was barely getting into college, and then fifth edition came out like several years later because nobody, because everybody hated it, and fifth edition is what blew up into the mainstream. Which is something I absolutely hate. Um, I was picked on in high school for liking Dungeons and Dragons or anything related to fantasy in any way. Picked on it relentlessly, saying you need to grow up, all this kind of stuff, yada, yada, yada. But now it's becoming to the point where um, people stopped caring and they actually went, hey, maybe there's something about this. And all I want to tell those guys is, no, y'all are not allowed because y'all picked on me in high school about it. For example, uh, everyone called me childish for wearing comic book t-shirts like all the freaking time. And I absolutely loved my comic book t-shirts. And what happened? Now it's everywhere. Yeah, like you see people going in getting excited for the next Marvel movie. And you know what I told them? No, y'all picked on me in high school for liking it. I'm, uh, Y'all aren't allowed. You're only doing it because of the hype. Yeah. Some and I guess it tr I guess that could trigger some people, but I'm just like, no, mine. Y'all aren't allowed. I do not know what I just picked up. Just gonna go ahead and put this away. Hmm. Anyways, yeah. And then that's the same thing with Dungeons and Dragons. Like, so many, uh, there are so many things in, uh, media that said that, uh, you're a basement dwelling nerd if you play Dungeons and Dragons. And now it's everywhere. Like, they, I can, I kid you not, they actually have a Dungeons and Dragons adventure for Stranger Things. Like, I kid you not, it's advertised as it. And you're given uh, Demi Gorgons from the show 
to uh, what's called as uh, NPCs to fight as monsters. And like I think what I was talking about some people like it's cool that the kids are using Dungeons and Dragons to uh, Dungeons and Dragons to relate the show to the viewers on how they view this uh, world this weird this weird world. But at the same time, I feel like no. No. Why why does this get to blow up and be popular and whenever I wasn't in high school? You know how many people I've had ask me, we never hey, we heard Dungeons and Dragons is a thing. Could you teach us how to play? And I taught I've actually taught people you would never expect to want to play to play. Yeah. And the thing was is that I wanted to try uh drag uh second edition uh D&D &D. and the, th the the problem and Kevin even pointed this out. Um, our group didn't like to try new things all the time. Like, if it wasn't the D and D uh, fifth edition uh, engine, we don't want any. Like he tried teaching uh, a superhero engine that he had. I absolutely loved it, but nobody else wanted to play after the first uh, attempt at it. And I was like, why do you guys not want to play? This is great. And it's just because they don't like to try new things. Yay, I finished my floor. I finished the floor. I finished the floor. I finished the floor. Yay, yay, yay. So, yeah. So, I, I was pretty bummed at the fact that I could... That I wanted to try the superhero thing. Because my brother, whenever Kevin writes a campaign, he writes a campaign. And so, he wanted to try something. And I absolutely loved the idea of it. In fact, I got really cool superpowers. And uh, oddly enough, it, it actually gave us, like, we actually had uh, um, Asgardian uh, uh, or Norse mythology inspired powers. Sam hated it because uh, he was like, screw you. Because I kept pointing out that I kept, I kept saying I was Loki and I got transformation powers. And so I always transform myself into something cool. And he goes, what are you going to transform yourself into? I'm going to transform myself into a Velociraptor. And he goes, are you going to do a real Velociraptor? Or, dude, my character is smart, and he's smart enough to know the, the Jurassic Park Velociraptors win. And so we went with Jurassic Park Velociraptor. And, yeah, I was dominating with a superhero part. And everyone's like, nah. And then he tried a Star Wars, the, the Star Wars thing, and he was trying to teach a new mechanic to us. I was actually looking at getting a new pair of dice just for the Star Wars campaign he was starting on, but nobody wanted to continue it. And I was like, you jerks, this is supposed to be fun. You guys are taking this away. And then there's a group that didn't want to teach new players uh, Pathfinder. They wanted people to know Pathfinder when they started playing, which is understandable. You, the game slows down whenever you have to teach new people. But at the same time, these guys were like my were like theater buddies of mine, and I was like, no, I want to I want to play with you guys. Come on, I want to learn Pathfinder. Come to and I told them, well, I play D and D, so I I kind of know how the role playing goes. And they said, no, this isn't like D&D. &D. Then I looked it up, and it turns out it's D&D &D 3.5. So I was like, it has similarities then. Come on. But yeah, you, you find out there are some groups who are like all for it. Like, yes, please join our group, and then... Then you find out your groups that are like not for it. But that's just probably because a lot of them don't like any players joining and stuff. So there's stuff like that. All right, so let's go up here. Kind of get out of the way. Oh my gosh, my throat hurts so much. I think after I get back to the safe house, I'm going to go ahead and stop because I've been talking a lot and my, my everything hurts.
Yup. My everything hurts. Let's see. And I just saw creepers. No, Creeper Chan, stay away from me. Oh my gosh. Villagers. Zombie villagers. Die. Oh no. <laughs> They're just every dang. They all just spawned up here. Like, no, don't mind me. Ah. No! My face! My modeling career! Well, at least I don't have to worry about the creeper trying to destroy my home. Seriously, you know how hard it is to get a brick house going? I will not die here. This is no place to die. Oh man. Okay, very bring out the bow. Still got arrows. Yes! I am provided with some protection. I'd probably be screwed. Okay, so I think... Oh, wait, no. I better... There we go. Alright. So I guess I'll go ahead and save here. All right. I'll catch you guys later on stream. All right. Bye.